No, it's okay. I know you've been staring at the ceiling for a little while. It's fine. Good evening. I didn't mean to come into your plane of existence, but it seemed to end it up that way. Hello. You can call me Caladrim. I'm, uh, what you would call a traveler. The person that walks in between the Y and the Z axis, between dimensions of sorts. I was traipsing along your mental plane before you, um, found you were having a hard time getting to sleep. It's okay. Tristodes seem to seek comfort in times like this. It's easy for me to just walk along when you sleep well. When Tristodes like you get some good comfort, you can be really good infrastructure for travelers like me. But it's fine. I noticed that something was troubling you. Sometimes people, when they have a hard time getting to sleep, it can be tumultuous in their thoughts. So, um, I could do a little something for you. Let me take a seat next to you. I have stories I like to tell. Stories to help set fire to the imagination and let your subconscious wander. If you'd like, I could read you a story. Not a typical one that you have probably heard from this plane, but one that I've come across in my travels. What mythology and religious contexts are for you might be fiction for someone else, and vice versa. This is a story that I came across when I was finding myself in a planet wind-swept canyons where cities are structured along the sides and airships travel from far and wide but could not go over to the side of those canyons without getting blown away. This is the story of Vasnu. <clears throat> Let's see if I can remember this off the top of my head. In the beginning, there was Yar, the void that encompassed all. Yar was alone, but he did not mind, for he did not know of anything else. This was like this for a very long time. Then one day, there was Vas. Vas was pure light and energy, covered in a sparkling cloak. Vas was once alone too and he did not like it. Speak with me, he said, but Yar did not. I wish to be your friend. Speak with me. The more Vas pleaded, the brighter and harsher his light glowed. It became painful for Yar to stand. Finally, he spoke. If you wish for someone to speak to so badly, speak to this. Yar placed a seed in a ball of clay and gave it to him. Vas was overjoyed, and with his light, the clay came to life. He called it Vasnu. Vas was not very good at names. He spoke to it for days, never stopping to take a break, and Vas was happy. But over time, the clay grew cracked and eventually turned to rock. Voss knew was dying. Heartbroken, Voss pleaded to Yar. What should I do? If I get closer to Voss now, he only cracks and dries out further. Please, I don't want to hurt your gift. Yar gave out a deep and long sigh. which swirled amidst the planet-sized rock, making Vasnu smooth and turning the cracks into deep canyons, where the seed lay on a plateau. You may breathe life into the seed that is left, but know this, if you speak as long and as loud as you have, it will only burn away. Each day you must turn away to let it rest, 
I will tolerate you in that time. Ma smiled and grew wiser. Thank you, Yar. You're a good friend. The winds of Yar still smooth the rock on the surface of Vasnu. Each day, Vas would speak to the life that listened, and each night he would let them gaze at his beautiful, shimmering, sparkling cloak. And the life spread more and more, some smart, some dumb. But when life finally grew the ability to speak back, Voss did not like at all he had heard. Some voices were selfish, angry, needy for attention. They wanted more of their god. They wanted power from their god. Kill my enemies, they would say. They don't believe in you as I do. But Voss told them, I don't want followers. I want a friend. But the people would not listen. They did not understand. One day, while the sky was dark, Voss sent a single drop of his light down to Vosnu, the drop that was him, so he could speak to life as they do. But when he asked for a friend, they knelt before him, worshipped him, demanded they touch his light. Scared and angry at their expectations of him, he pulled away in a brilliant flash. Night fell on Vosnu for three hundred years, turning the oceans to poisonous sulfur and forcing life to teach itself how to survive such harsh solitude. What should I do, Yar? They see me as so much more than I am. They want me to be something I am not, he asked. Yar, the void who was once alone, now saw a bit of his void in his friend, and it was not as pretty as it was inside him. So Yar comforted him. You see them as I once saw you. They are scared, confused, and their hatred and sin has turned their beautiful seas black. You must guide them but not as a friend like I did. You must teach them like a father. And that was when Vas returned his light to observe and care as a god. He bestowed upon them a new light, a light that life could share. This would be the magic that led the world. Vas learned to observe and whisper and for once, Vas, Yar, and Vasnu were happy. It's a quaint little story. It makes you wonder if the gods were actually aware of what they were doing when they created life, or if they were just children like the rest of us, playing with dirt, or, in this case, clay. I don't hold it too much against Foss. He's... He was young, and did not know better. And sometimes when you don't know better, you have a tendency to lash out at things. Sometimes when you don't understand, all you have is that fear. But... Think of all the wondrous things you go through in life that you don't understand. But they do nothing but bring joy to you. It's almost like a magic trick. A spectacle is wondrous, but you don't understand how it was made. But in that moment, it doesn't seem all that important, because the existence of that magic seems to matter all the more, doesn't it? I suppose you have a million questions about how I work, about where I go, but I can see your eyes are getting a little heavy, so that will have to be for another day, but hey, I can come back if you just let me know that you'd like me to. When you're
when you rest your head on your pillow and think of the times you're having a hard time getting to sleep. Perhaps I'll show up and read you another story. Maybe next time, something from your dimension. It was a pleasure to meet you, little Tristone. I hope sleep is as much a friend to you as it was to yours.